Welcome back. It is 929. A group of American veterans have banded together to form what's called Task Force Pineapple. They are establishing what they call a Pineapple Express pipeline to Kabul's airport and other parts of the country that have reportedly brought more than 1,000 people to safety thanks to them, including American citizens, Afghan special forces, soldiers, and government officials. Joining us to discuss is Zach Loyce. He is a former U.S. Army Green Beret who was helping with the evacuations. Good morning to you, Zach. Thank you for joining me this morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you. Tell everybody what is Task Force Pineapple and what is the exact mission? Uh, Task Force Pineapple is a group of special operations veterans who came together to get our former colleagues and their families and American citizens out of Afghanistan. Uh, our purpose is to honor the promise that our government and ourselves made to our, our friends and brothers and bring them home to safety. Okay, tell me what you guys have done so far, because we all have been at home watching the videos, watching the evacuations, watching the horrible violence that has taken place. You guys have put yourself in the middle of all of this. Tell us what you've done so far, what you've been able to do, and how difficult this has been. Uh, the first phase of our operation conduct, uh, consisted of getting people to the, the H. Kaya International Airport in Kabul. Uh, once the evacuation ended there, we have now transitioned into getting our folks to safety and looking at new resources to get them eventually to freedom, whether okay. in another country or to the United States. So how do you go about doing that? Because how do you know who's still out there and who needs help? So, so most of the people that we had worked with, these were friends that we served with uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, so we had been in contact with them. We were trying to actually go through the State Department, get them approved for their uh, visas. Uh, we were assisting them here in the United States. Uh, but once we kept, continued to run into roadblocks uh, with getting information or getting them out, that's kind of when we came together to, to help coordinate with other government agencies to assist with their evacuation. Uh, many of them did not get out during the, uh, the Kabul airport. Uh, so now we're looking at other modes of transportation to get them to freedom. Okay, without disclosing anything that would put any of these people in danger, I'm curious, how many people are you looking at? Well, how many have you rescued so far? How many more are you looking at trying to help out and how do you get them out of there? So, so we have already rescued over a thousand people. Um, and that number is slowly starting to go up. However, with the the airlines being on hold and the flights being on hold, uh, we're kind of looking at other options. Right now we have over 2,000 families in our manifest that we are looking to support and that number continues to grow day by day. Uh, right now we're over 70 American citizens, we have Canadians, we have uh, citizens of other nationalities and then a series of special immigrant visa folks as well. And these are people who have already been vetted and approved by the State Department. Okay, so it sounds to me like you are working with the State Department on, on some of these or on all of this, is that right? We are trying. Okay, so then paint a picture for me because I think it's hard for us, you know, the average American citizen to even imagine what's involved in here. Give me an example. What are you doing? Are you going in there with uh, special ops people? Are you taking um, your own airplanes in there to do this? What exactly is happening? I want you to paint that picture for me. Uh, we are commanding and coordinating from a virtual secure location, so we are not boots on ground. We are using a lot of our, our networks and connections that we still had in country with our Afghan friends, former uh, special forces and special operations veterans uh, from Afghanistan that are still on ground and assisting us. So we're kind of working with them and coordinating uh, their movements throughout the country. Uh, the biggest thing for us is trying to eva evade Taliban checkpoints, searches, uh, things of that nature. So this sounds like a dangerous mission. Why are you guys willing to do this? And I understand that you're now a social studies teacher. Why are you putting yourself back in harm's way again? Uh, well, I think, you know, teachers are leaders uh, first and foremost before they are teachers. And I have to set the example for my students. Uh, I teach in Syracuse, New York. It's a very high immigrant refugee population. Uh, many of my students uh, come from that region, especially my female students. And I didn't think I could really stand in front of a classroom this year and look my students in the eye, uh, knowing that I had the capabilities and the skills to continue to help others in Afghanistan, and I walked away from it. 
Uh, so I'm continuing to help out with the mission. I've taken a, a brief leave of absence until the mission is over. Um, and you know, I understand the, the fate that will happen to a lot of my colleagues, uh, their families, and the women in that country. So I have to ask you, do you think the U.S. should have left Afghanistan? Uh, you know, that's, a, that's something that we can answer after when everything is said and done. Right now, the focus is really just getting everyone who's still there home. So how much longer does Task Force Pineapple plan on conducting these missions? Until our friends are home. Okay. I want you to tell me, if you can, um, you said you've rescued over 1,000 right now. Um, what particular areas you're looking at and what does this involve? Uh, well, we're looking at areas all over the country. Um, we are trying to reach out through our government agencies to contact other countries that will possibly allow access or at least entrance into their country. Um, so there's multiple prongs uh, to this approach, both uh, through Task Force Pineapple, through various government agencies, uh, diplomacy, and political efforts. So as a former Green Beret, you've served your country, you served in that area, and um, I did ask you, did you feel we should leave Afghanistan? You said, let's see what happens when all is said and done. But I, I do, I do want to get your reaction and a final word as to how this has all been handled and what you want the American people to know as someone who's been there and done that. Well, the one thing I want the American people to know that this is an opportunity to cross political uh, lines, come together. Um, unity is one of the, the key values of, of American values, and it's something we've lost for a while. I, I think regardless of you know, age, race, creed, political identification, uh, this is something that we can all unite behind in getting these people home. Right? These are American citizens. They're still over there. Uh, the women in that country, uh, if we pull out and leave them there, uh, their fate will be a very tragic one at the hands of the Taliban. So everyone who has a mother or a daughter or a sister, uh, thinking of them, we should definitely consider that as our driving force and motivation to get these people home to freedom and safety. Well, I love hearing your voice because it sounds like you have hope where a lot of people think there is a hopeless situation. We so appreciate you joining us this morning. Former Green Beret, may I please just say thank you for your service and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. We'll be right back.